Okay, so hi everyone. Today's video is going to be on how to study smart for MRCP part 2 written examination. So before we go into the video, I have put the link in the description to the app as well as Instagram account of Neuraxis Pro. So I've uploaded my neurology notes uh, on this app. It's based on Harrison as well as Bradley's neurology. So those who want to access my content, you can do so in the link below. And I've also put the link to my telegram group in the description. So those who want to discuss MCQs regularly, you can join the group over there. Okay, so now let's get into the video. So before we go into the preparation, just a short uh, summary on the exam format. So MRCP part 2 is going to have 200 questions, 100 questions in paper 1 and 100 questions in paper 2. Each is going to be for 3 hours and it's going to be separated by a short lunch break. And an important difference between part 1 and part 2 is part 2 is going to have a lot of picture questions. Okay, these picture questions could be uh, ECGs, X-rays, MRI, clinical photographs and some questions on echo. For international candidates, it's going to be predominantly an offline mode of examination. So you'll have to actually go to the exam center and take the exam in person. Whereas in UK, they do have an option of taking an online exam. So this might change later on, but uh, till now it's uh, an offline format for international candidates. And just like part one, it's going to be a best of five format. And another important difference in part two compared to part one is the five options are going to be very, very similar to each other. So you'll be very cautious in selecting the right answer over here. So in my session, the pass mark was 454 and I had taken the exam in October. Okay, I had taken it recently in October 2020 and I was able to score 855. But again, remember marks don't matter. You just got to pass. And another important thing is the pass mark in part two is much less compared to part one. And my preparation period was for two and a half months. So coming to the exam dates and fees, so just like part one, part two is going to happen three times a year. It happens in March, July and October. The fees for international candidates is going to be 594 pounds. So this is almost 59,000 Indian rupees. And the eligibility is just, you got to pass in part one. So applying for part two is very simple. You don't have to upload your PMQ or any other documents of any sort. You just need to pass in part one, go to your MyMRCP account, pay the fees and you have applied. That's it. So coming to the study material. So I had used two question banks for uh, preparing for part two, just like for part one, it was past medicine and past test. So I'll just discuss the pros and cons of both the question banks right now. So the gold standard question bank and the most important question bank is going to be past test. Actually, you can pass the exam by just being thorough with past test. An important advantage of past test is uh, the questions in past test are going to be very similar to your real exam questions. Okay, they're very similar to the RCP style of questions. And even though direct repeats are rare, conceptual repeats from past tests are very, very common. So it's very important. Past test is a must know question bank. Even if you have done only past tests, it's more than enough to clear the exam. So it's a gold standard question bank. And another advantage of past tests is it's going to have your past year papers. So your past year papers from 2015. So working out past year papers, especially dur during your last month of preparation, uh, is very important so that you understand the you understand the RCP style of questions and rarely you can get repeats. Okay, you rarely can get repeats. And the cons are uh, compared to past medicine, the explanations aren't much in detail. The explanations are usually very short. Uh, they don't uh, give a very detailed explanation, but that's not a problem. So if you are very strong with your basics, your part one uh, your part one preparation is very good. You can directly go ahead and just use past tests for part two. It's uh, Actually, you don't even need to use past medicine if your basics were good. So it is a little costlier compared to past medicine. I wouldn't call that a con. So this is about past test. Now coming to past medicine. So the unique advantage of past medicine is they have very detailed explanation. So if you want to uh, revise the, the NICE guidelines or you want to revise certain facts, uh, you can go ahead and first initially do past medicine. Once you've built up on your basics, then you can go ahead and use past test. So for those who are taking your part, part one exam a very long time ago, or those who weren't very satisfied with their part one preparation, you can initially start with past medicine and then go ahead uh, to past test. So past medicine have very detailed explanations. It will be very useful if you actually take notes of these explanations. And it's, really, it's much cheaper compared to past test. Another advantage of past medicine, they have something called knowledge tutor in past medicine. So what I had done around a day or two before the exam is a uh, knowledge tutor. I'd use knowledge tutor in past medicine. So knowledge tutor, you can rapidly revise all these very uh, short and important facts. So I found this very useful before the exam. So don't forget to use 
So for past medicine subscribers, don't forget to use knowledge tutor in past medicine, especially the one week before the exam. Uh, the cons of past medicine is the questions in past medicines are very easy. So they are not very similar to the real exam questions. But remember, the main reason you are going to subscribe to past medicine is not to practice tough MCQs, is actually to go through the explanations. So past medicine, uh, work out all the MCQs, take notes of all the explanations, then go to past tests. For those who are very confident uh, with their part on preparation, uh, who just want to build up on their basics, you can go ahead, write, uh, you can go ahead and start with past test, work out all the MCQs over there. Now, what do you do for picture questions? So for dermatology, I had used Dermnet and for ECGs, you can use the LITFL ECG library. And also there's a decent picture collection in past test and past medicine, which should actually be enough. But if you're not very confident with ECGs and dermatology pictures, you can go ahead and use these sources. Next, a very important question that many people ask me, do I need to use textbooks? So my personal recommendation is no. Uh, I feel textbooks are going to eat your time. They're going to consume a huge part of your uh, preparation. If you have worked out past medicine and past test uh, properly, even once it's more than enough to clear the exam. Uh, textbooks are going to eat your time. I don't think it's very useful for this uh, exam. And how long to prepare? Optimally, three to four months are enough. But if your part one preparation is solid, uh, around two to three months is more than enough to clear this exam. So this is the split up. So you can see that cardiology, endocrinology, uh, and then infectious diseases, neurology, ne uh, nephrology, respiratory medicine, especially PFTs. You have to be very thorough with PFTs. And then therapeutics and toxicology. So these are going to have a very solid weightage for this exam. And even though uh, the, the mark splitage doesn't include statistics, you can expect around one to two MCQs from biostatistics. So if you have uh, prepared well, you can take probably a day or two just to revise your bio, bio statistics from your part one. So even though it's not mentioned here, you can get one or two MCQs from biostatistics. So coming to the pass rate, uh, the MRCP pass rate is actually significantly higher compared to pass one. It's around overall more than 70 percentage. So don't let the pass rate fool you. Part two is actually a very tough exam. You have to be very well prepared for it. So compared to your part one, so you can see Jan 2020, over there, the pass rate is very less compared to part two. It's just 40%, just below 40% for part one. So uh, this is what I had done for part two. I think most of you would find it to uh, be useful. Uh, thank you.